Hello and welcome to another episode of the PT Special Revision series. Now we are going to begin with our second episode, which is of course trying to make you understand what is important in the prelims 2021 and what is not. So kindly pay attention. Let's move on with the first topic that is India's first dolphin research center. So India's first dolphin research center is going to come up in Patna and the conservation process will be similar to the Project Tiger. Project Tiger, which was there in 1973, and it has shown remarkable progress in increasing the number of tigers in the country. So why do we need to conserve and preserve dolphins? Because they are an important indicator for our own Ganges. It is very important for their presence because food web is dependent on them as well. And Ganges River Dolphins is the na national aquatic animal. Please keep that in mind. And of course, it is in the Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Now understand. Those species and those animals which need rigorous protection, they are because of the, they are scheduled in the schedule one. And because of this only, we will be able to conserve those species which are important and they are listed as endangered in the IUCN red list. Because other river dolphins are, some, suppose if we talk about Yangtze river dolphin, it is already extinct, possibly extinct, never seen since a long time. Indus and Amazon and Yangtze river dolphins are also another important species of dolphins. Now, if I'm going to tell you, then apart from India, the Ganges river dolphins are present in Nepal and Bangladesh as well. And they use echolocation for food. What is echolocation? It is transmitting of sound waves by any mammal. And with the help of that only, the presence of obstacle or food is needed. So, echolocation, here this is the dolphin and this is the obstacle. And the dolphin is going to send, transmit waves. Now, this wave, when it will touch the obstacle, it will be reflected back to the dolphin. Now, the dolphin will be able to know that there is a presence of anything here. And supposedly, it will, if we, it founds food or hurdle, it will work according to that only. And it is also used by bats, whales and certain moles. So, echolocation is very important because Ganges River dolphins, they cannot see well. Moving on, if we talk about the next topic, it is human and wildlife conflict, which is increasing day by day because of the human induced activities needing for food, shelter and everything else. Report is released by World Wide Fund and World Wildlife Fund, beg your pardon, World Wildlife Fund and UNEM, that is United Nations Environment Programme. The species are threatened by increasing human wildlife conflict. Okay, it will show which species are actually at the brink of extinction, very vulnerable or endangered because of the increasing human intrusion. That includes tiger, leopard, elephant and even polar bear. Also, most cases of human wildlife conflict are reported in India itself and it has also suggested that some models with the, uh, if we talk about some models here in India, there's Sonitpur model of Assam. It has also shown the importance of Sonitpur model. Now, Sonitpur model was implemented by WWF and India in the year 2003 and 4. Keep that in mind. 2003 and 4. And in this, the local communities were linked with the state forest department. Collective efforts were made to keep elephants away from the farm. Why? Now let's understand. Now, because elephants could not find anything to eat, they started moving away from the forest and started raiding the crop fields of human beings. And because of that, a lot of human animal conflict started taking place. Now, in a very peaceful manner, there is, an, uh, there is a process which, in which in a very peaceful manner, the elephants were moved away with the help of trained elephants. The trained, there were elephants which were trained in order to keep their herd away from the crop fields and those animals are known as kumki. Keep that in mind. Let's move away to the next topic that is Harit Dhara. What is Harit Dhara? Harit Dhara is a feed which is anti-methogenic and it has been developed by Indian Council of Agriculture Research. This is supplemental in nature, this feed. And because it will mitigate the digestion process in a sense that less methane will be there. This is a new way to reduce methane emissions. And belching and rumination are, these are causing methane emission. Because methane is a potent greenhouse gas. It is a potent greenhouse gas which is produced normally in a very normal process 
in the digestion process naturally by the cattle so in order to understand how this feed works this will reduce their uh, entire uh, the of course if we talk about the digestion process that won't be reduced but the microbes the supplemental microbes in the feed will help in the reduction of methane emission by the cattle and harit dhana will reduce methane emission by 17 to 20 percent it is what is it using as a substrate rk and that means the lower level substrate means the lower level that produces methane rk actually produces methane in the cattle and rk as basically these are microbes which resemble such microbes that are present in rumen rumen is a layer that is present in the stomach where the digestion process takes place of an animal and fermentation of cellulose and sugar happens here only so microbes will be present which will of course help in the digestion process in a sense that methane won't be produced as much now let's talk about albino common palm civet albino common palm civet it was cited in satkosia tiger reserve in odisha satkosia means satkosh it has gotten its name from satkosia satkosh now albino palm civet if we talk about these are medium sized mammals who belong to the viveridae family and this medium sized this medium sized basically civet is actually uh, nocturnal in nature it walks away walks out and look for its uh, looks uh, out for food and everything in the night time that is why it is nocturnal and it lives on land as well as street that means it is arboreal why am i calling it albino because it is white albinism as we all know is the discoloration of the skin turns it to white in humans also the hair is also not naturally uh, black it's uh, brownish golden brownish tinge so that is why it is albino palm civet it is covered with coarse hair almost colorless in nature and they are found in south and southeast asia moving on let's talk about the satkosia the floral and faunal presence in satkosia which is in odisha where mahanadi river passes through the eastern ghat making a beautiful gorge in eastern ghat and because i'm telling you mahanadi passes keep this in mind because this could be asked in prelims so floral and faunal presence is wet and dry deciduous forest okay let's move forward and talk about glacial lake outbursts and that is glacial lake atlas in glacial lake atlas we will find out about it now glacial lake atlas of ganga river basin it was recently released nearly 4707 glacial lakes have been mapped in this and ganga basin what is it it is the watershed of the ganga river which divides itself from the tributaries that is this is the ganga and it has its tributaries here now ganga is delineated by the watershed that means ganga is different and its tributaries are different this is known as watershed a clear demarcation between the main parent river and its tributaries and the glacial mapping here was done through resource sat resource sat is basically a remote sensing satellite remote sensing satellite and because of the help of the satellite we will be able to know what are the difference different uh, floral and faunal and every resources the terrain what is present what is not present ground water and everything will be known with the help of this the information about glacial lakes will be available with the help of this atlas and now if we talk about events like glof what is glof suppose this is a mountain and this is a barrigating of moraines moraines because of the sedimentation of moraine what is happening whenever the glacier is melting the water is getting deposited here and if the glaciers will melt in a much more accelerated manner this region this moraine it is going to burst because it cannot hold the water anymore now that is known as glacial lake outburst flood because of the uh, outburst the flash floods will occur moving on glof is a release of melt water from moraine as we all know and ice dam as well so this is very the dams are very weak in structure because they are made of moraines and ice and because of this map we will be able to know and of course prevent try to prevent at least glofs moving on let's talk about lidar survey reports lidar reports based on lidar technology to find out the availability of water in forest area now 
if we talk about lidar what is this i am drawing a diagram here suppose this is an airplane and this is a this is an area okay and what will happen this airplane will send laser technology with the help of laser technology it will send laser here now this laser if it comes into contact with water bodies or mountain bodies or any body which the airplane wants the information about it will send the information back to the storage system wherever the storage of information has to be there so because of lidar technology the amount of ground water will be able to understand we will be able to understand the presence of lakes the amount of ground water present and because of that it will be increased in forest where lakes and ground water are less because we have to reduce human animal conflict why whenever an animal has to move out of its own comfortable territory it's because of food and water so if we will be able to know that this water contains water this uh, area doesn't contain water we will be able to increase the amount of water so that the animal doesn't come into our area so that is why it is very important and soil and water conservation structure will also be helped with that only moving on let's talk about black carbon what is black carbon black carbon it emits from incomplete combustion of diesel coal and other biomass fuels so diesel coal and other biomass fuels if they are unable to be burned completely they will send out black carbon very small particles and because of that it has what does it do it will settle on the surfaces and because of that lots of problems will be there we will talk about the problems let's talk about the indus gangetic plain because of the presence of black carbon this area is impacted very badly and black carbon prevents cloud formation it absorbs sunlight and converts into heat how suppose a layer is there of ocean it will put black carbon suppose the black carbon settles on the water body now the moisture won't be able to be developed for the cloud formation and that is why it will have a problem with the raining procedure and also it absorbs sunlight and converts it into heat whenever a surface will have black carbon hmm this surface is having black carbon now black is a good absorber of heat and light so because white surfaces they reflect light black carbon will absorb light and whenever the heat won't be reflected back into the atmosphere what will happen the heat will be increased and that will lead to climate change and if we talk about the next topic that is whale vomit it is known as amber grease recently a case of seizure of 9 kg of amber grease was seen and it is a solid waxy substance known as whale vomit also it is called floating gold and why there was a complaint about it what's wrong because it has been illegally smuggled in the country or illegally extracted from sperm whales which are illegally hunted for amber grease why is amber grease needed it is good in the perfume industry it is needed in the perfume industry traditional medicines as well as spice moving on let's talk about more of sperm whale they are fisator catadon or also known as cachalot also sperm whales is the largest of the tooth whale species and they are found in the temperate and tropical water bodies between the tropics and the temperate regions and also beyond the tropics and they are listed as vulnerable in iuc and red list they are protected under schedule 1 of the wildlife protection act of 1972 okay so i hope you understood and walked along the entire segment we will come again tomorrow with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching